of the retiring Vince Scully and the way he started every broadcast. I'd like to say hi, everybody, and a very pleasant good afternoon to you wherever you may be. It's the Panthers and Falcons on Fox. Thank you, Kurt. The quarterbacks, Cam Newton, seeks to bounce back today in Atlanta. Matt Ryan just looks for the good bounces to continue. Sitting atop the NFC South Carolina Panthers. They're trying to get to 500 today and welcome everyone to the Georgia Dome. Nick Stockton with four time pro bowler Chris Spielman. Well, the Panthers are one and two. That's more losses than they've had in the regular season all of last year. But Chris, they're not ready to press the panic button. Oh, they shouldn't. They're a good football team and the offense has a chance to get right today going up against an Atlanta defense that gives up 30 point plus a game. Here's what they need to do. Kelvin Benjamin has to be involved. Cam Newton cannot hold on to the football for five seconds. He's got to get rid of it. And the offensive line needs to protect a little bit longer. But you know that the Atlanta Falcons can score more points than anyone in the league. But this is the biggest test that they've had of this young season. Can they pass this test? That's the best front seven to play with the Carolina defense. And look, they, they spread the ball around. Matt Ryan has hit eight plus receivers in all their victory or three games this year. The other thing is they're balanced offensively. If they can run the football with Freeman and Coleman, it's a well-balanced football team. It's a good test for both sides of that ball. There's no question, Chris, that this is a big early season NFC South test. Panthers and Falcons coming up. Here are today's direct TV players to watch. We want to see if Kelvin Benjamin can get off press today and get a catch shut out last week. Julio Jones. A threat even if he doesn't catch the football. This season get every out of market NFL game every Sunday with NFL Sunday ticket only on Direct TV. Call 1 800 Direct TV. Kickoff coming up. Fox Sports welcomes you to the following presentation of the National Football League. Welcome back to Atlanta. It's getting set for kickoff. I'm Christina Pink, joined by Panthers head coach Ron Rivera. Coach, coming into this game, you told us your team had not pushed the panic button. What do you need to see your players focus on today? Well, probably the biggest thing is be consistent with the football. You know, we got to protect the quarterback, protect the football, and on the defensive side, we got to be good on third downs. Well, Matt Ryan and that offense has certainly put up big numbers. How do you contain those weapons today? Well, I think the biggest thing is be physical with them up front at the line of scrimmage and uh, shut the run down. All right, thank you, coach. Back to you, Dick. All right, Christina, thank you very much. And Dan Quinn, and uh, his job, of course, is to get that uh, defense going, Chris, because he was a defensive specialist in Seattle before he came here. Yeah, they have a young defense, and, and they have a chance. They're playing, even though they're giving up 30 points a game, they have made big plays. Deion Jones had to pick six, the rookie linebacker. So he expects them to get better every single week with experience. And he'd rather be 2-1 and one than 1-2, one and two, and that's where he is, leading the division. And there is uh, Cam Newton, and... Uh, He's had a couple of rough outings the first game against Denver where he took a lot of hits that were questionable that may be not called and of course uh, sacked eight times last week. Sometimes you don't have to make the great play all the time. Take what the defense is giving you. Do not force it. One thing to look for moving forward today is he climbs the pocket. Falcons have won the toss. They defer. So that's Ted Ginn Jr. who will return hopefully the opening kickoff and I say hopefully for the Panthers and Matt Bosher will be kicking off for Atlanta. Ginn is a danger no matter where he is as a return man or as a receiver. And this kick deep and will be down to the end zone taken out of the 25 by the Carolina Panthers who were beaten last week 22 to 10 by Minnesota at home. So Cam Newton who's had quite a streak going 32 games with a passing touchdown and a rushing touchdown that's the most in league history so he can beat you so many ways uh, and again I think he talked about today about Kelvin Benjamin cannot be shut out and I agree with that as long as within the scheme of the offense they do not force the football to him interesting to see whether they want to get him going early and depending on what Atlanta does in that regard. 61 snaps targeted only once. 
Zero catches. Cameron Artis Payne starting his second straight game at running back and going to the air on first down and the catch is made by Ginn who gets about nine yards. So Carolina of course number one protecting Cam Newton and they made a change uh, Michael Orr with concussion protocol is out at left tackle. So Mike Remmers moves from left to right to left tackle. Greg Olson the leading receiver for this Panther team. Matchup nightmare for linebackers and safeties. Second and two. That's Benjamin moving over to the right side. And the first back through is Mike Tolbert, the reliable fullback. And he is close to the first down. Take a look at the Atlanta Falcons defense, and they've given up a little over 30 points per game. Vic Beasley Jr. Brought in to be a pass rusher. He's got to be effective when he's called upon that role on his third and short. It's a simple call for me. I have a 6'5", 240 pound quarterback sneak it in there. Donald Hawkins, number 78, is an extra offensive lineman for the Panthers. Tobert is the one back in the backfield. Quarterback sneak and a first down. Who better than Cam Newton to get a yard if you need it? That's a, I mean, that's an easy call, and that's the benefit what Cam does. And there comes a flag yep. late. Penalty marker down after the play. John Hussey is the referee this afternoon. No, well, Dick, there's a fine line with playing with emotion and playing under control. After the play was over, taunting. Number one of the offense, 15-yard penalty, first down. That's a bad start for Carolina. Controlled emotion. I mean, I get you know, having fun and being fired up, but you don't, you know, have a little patience and understand that you're bigger than that to walk away. You cannot do that as the leader of this football team. I get the first down marker, all that stuff. You get a little push match, let it go. Threw the ball at Deion Jones, the rookie middle linebacker. So now instead of a first down, it is a first down, but instead of the 31 yard line, they're back to the 21. And a mix up on the backfield and Newton's gonna carry and get five yards back. Newton and two backs collided and Deion Jones made the tackle, but a pickup of four. Well, they're trying to run the read option and the quarterback and running back have to get on the same page. If that quarterback does not give you the football right away, you have to release. Now Cam Newton, more often than not, is going to keep this football right here. He's not getting it. You see Olsen tripping up, and he's got to release. He's trying to hold on to the football, and Cam is trying to pull it out. Again, that has to be repped a thousand times, Dick, in practice, and I don't think they do it. Second down and six. This time they hand off to Artis Payne, but the Falcons are there. Atlanta Falcons, 30th overall defensively, but better against the run, and it was Grady Jarrett, the defensive tackle on the play. That'll bring up third and about five. Well, if I'm Atlanta, I need to play press coverage right here. If they're a zone team, it's easy for the big targets of the Panthers to sit down at the sticks. You've got to get up and challenge them. Plus, Benjamin has trouble with press coverage. And the veteran Dwight Freeney, number 93, has come in as a pass rusher deluxe. The Falcons hope. Third and five. And Cam Newton gets hit as he throws, and the pass is incomplete. Pressure by Freeney, who came from the Cardinals and is a man of all seasons and many seasons. And the pass rushing Freeney makes Newton miss, and it's fourth down. Here comes Freeney off the right end, and actually the protection is pretty solid, but Freeney hits him with a spin move, and that's quite frankly a miss as Benjamin soaping at the sticks, but that's a miss by Cam Newton over through that pass. Andy Lee will punt. Eric Weems is back. Low kick, line drive, Weems on the return. It's a good one. 
And a flag goes down from upfield as Weems goes out of bounds just shy of the 40 yard line. Fifty three yard punt. During the return holding receiving team number 16 that penalty will be enforced 10 yards from the end of the run timeout Justin Hardy was holding and so that will nullify a pretty good punt return by Ween so Matt Ryan will go on the attack for the first time when we return Matt Ryan leading the Falcons from the 29 yard line last week a banner game for him throwing on first down and the pass is caught by Julio Jones well they got him going fast didn't they Julio Jones with only one catch stopped by the rookie James Bradbury after picking up 21 well it starts out with max protection which allows Julio Jones to work one on one it almost felt like the Falcons were anticipating blitz they had the perfect protection and you leave 11 out there on an island he's going to win 99 out of 100 times so Matt Ryan didn't waste much time getting Jones into the flow of things. And a first down at the 49 and the quick pass again to Jones. He'll have another first down and gets to the 35 yard line of the Panthers before Luke Keekley makes the stop. So 35 yards on two passes to Jones starts the Falcon offense. One area where I feel like the Panthers can improve on defense is they're a straight zone team. I think, quite frankly, against this Atlanta team that spreads the ball to tight ends and backs and underneath the receivers, they need to go to a matchup zone, not cover dirt, but cover men. This team has been a machine offensively, but they haven't gone against the greatest of all defenses either coming into this game. A first down and another play action going to the air again if he can find a target, and he does. And the pass is caught to the 20-yard line. Once again, it's Jones. Colin Jones makes the tackle, so gains of 21, 14, and 15 on three passes to Julio Jones. Uh, and so when you have a guy that's hot, all right, not only is this going to help the Falcons defense, but Julio Jones not quitting on the play after getting knocked down, continue to work. Now what you have to do, see, that puts an onus on the Panthers because all of a sudden Julio's hurt him three for three. That opens everything else up for everybody else to win their one-on-one -on -one battles. 51 yards on three catches. They haven't run the ball yet, and a first down at the 20. And the first running play, and it's a loss. Devontae Freeman, great one-two punch, stopped by K1 Short of Carolina. Take a look at the Atlanta Falcons offense, and we've already seen a big glimpse of that. And, of course, uh, Jones leads a really good group of receivers. Yeah, and don't forget about Jacob Tammy down there, the tight end, the guy that... Finds a way to get open and solid. Finds his own, sits it, solid hands. Loss of four, second and 14, back to the 24. So after one run, Ryan wants to pass again. Sees no targets, will run and stop short of the first down. He'll mark it at the 11 yard line. Good ad lib that time by Matt Ryan. I think an underrated athlete myself. I mean, anytime you can take that throwing lane, which you'll see right here, and turn it into a running lane, again, more pressure added on by the Falcons' offense on that Panther defense. As Thomas Davis vacates the area, that's a go sign, the green light for Matt Ryan to tuck and run. And by the way, they gave him the first down, so it's first and goal now for Atlanta. And there's a shovel pass to Freeman and Freeman gets inside the five to about the three Thomas Davis is there to stop him but what a juggernaut this Atlanta offense is in the first series for them well the, the, the beautiful thing about it if you're a fan of offense is they're operating at an up tempo so that's really controlling what Carolina does on defense because they're operating at such a, a pace they've struggled a bit in the red zone probably because they've gotten some long plays they go again to Freeman and this time the Panthers are there and knock it back, led by Luke Keekley. Tell you, with Keekley and Thomas Davis, they have two of the better tandem linebackers in football. I think the best of tandem, and they throw and throw in Shaq Thompson, number 54. All three guys, solid tacklers. Easy, 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 easy. 
And we're going to First have a timeout time called by the Falcons. It's a good timeout because they don't want to make a mistake here. So close to scoring here in the first quarter. Plus a, a good timeout by the Panthers so they can catch their breath because <laughs> they're coming fast and furious. And I don't mean the movie. No score. 720 to go in this the first will be quarter. A 30 second charge timeout. Correction. This will be a 30 second charge timeout. So here, here's what you do over there. The, and I'm Keekly and I'm the coaching staff and I'm talking. You know what solves a lot of problems, a lot of tempo? Pressure. Blitz, because it eliminates thought from a defense. It, here's how the blitz goes in the huddle. All right, bring it in, guys. You got him, I got 11, you got 89. Everybody else, go sick the quarterback. And that takes the pressure off that, that defense is trying to think and catch themselves. So you eliminate thought by these guys, pin their ears back, and let them go after it. Tevin Coleman has come into the game at running back. He's part of that great one-two punch with Freeman. Coming off a super game, so it's third and goal on the four. This is the eighth play of the drive. They don't blitz. Ryan has time, and he gets the pass into the end zone for the touchdown to Jacob Tammy, who you pointed out early on. The reliable tight end giving the Falcons the early lead. And Matt Bryant for the extra point. Eight plays, 71 yards, and the Falcons draw first blood, leading seven to nothing midway through this first quarter. Tammy, the tight end, and a great drive by Atlanta. 71 yards in eight plays, three catches by Julio Jones for 51 yards. Ryan was five for five and Tammy with his second touchdown catch of the year. Remember he's leading the team and receiving coming into the game. So Ted Ginn Jr. is back again to receive a kickoff if he can and he can and he will run it out from the five. And good coverage as Ginn gets to the 18 or 19. Philip Wheeler making the tackle for the Falcons. So Cam Newton who had an unfortunate taunting penalty, comes out to see if he can redeem himself in just a moment. Carolina ball for the second time, and the taunting penalty on Cam Newton affected their field position in their first drive. Ball at the 19. Cameron Artis Payne, and he gets about five. Here's why you talk about bringing blitz pressure. Because he has too long to throw and it allows Tammy to come from the left side of the field all the way to the bottom of your screen. Avoiding the contact by Thomas Davis and a perfect strike by Matt Ryan because he had time to move within the pocket and survey the field, which he does best. Second down and six and the deep pass and the one handed grab incomplete. Devin Funches nearly made a tremendous catch, covered well downfield by Robert Alford. They're going to get Alford here, Dick, with holding on. He was beat deep, and you always want those corners, if you're beat deep, to go ahead and take the penalty, because if you don't, and Funches is able to maintain his balance, he's dancing in the end zone. You know, when you have Funches and Benjamin, you have a good chance of having something called on them. There are two fouls on the play, one by each team. Illegal shift of the offense, number 17. Pass interference on the defense, number 23. Those fouls will offset, second down. That affects a third, what would have been a 30 yard penalty against Atlanta, but uh, Carolina with an illegal shift and they'll come back and redo it. It's also recent history. I mean, the Panthers last week against the Vikings self-inflicted wounds. They were buried down and deep in their own end line, holding penalty. Brought the ball back, and also Benjamin got pushed in the back, brought a Fozzie Whitaker touchdown back last week. Big plays negated by mental errors by the team in white. Offsetting penalties, so it'll be second down and six once again. 
from the 23. And thrown for a loss back on the 20. Cameron Artis Payne by Derek Shelby. A loss of three yards. And that'll bring up third down and long. Well, it's something about to get off. I mean, defensive tackles to get off the ball so quickly. Watch Shelby right here. He's going to get poolers. And so he does a great job of getting on the hip of the puller. That's technique taught and technique executed. Third and nine. Crowd is in full throat. Newton with the pass, and it is caught for the first down and extra yardage for Kelvin Benjamin to the 40-yard line. 21-yard pickup, so Julio Jones and Kelvin Benjamin in the thick of the action here early in the first quarter. Can he beat press coverage? Watch True fought right here get turned. This is bad technique by the corner, turning his back, and Kelvin Benjamin beats coverage because they weren't physical with him at the line of scrimmage. And here's the pass, and it's complete to Corey Brown. Brown getting about five yards on the play. As we wind down to five minutes remaining in this first quarter, Falcons scoring on their first possession. Nice adjustment by Mike Shula, the play caller for the Panthers. What a little tempo and short passes to get number one in rhythm. Getting rid of the ball early, as you mentioned. And he swings it out to Fozzie Whitaker, and Whitaker will be a couple of yards shy of the first down, thanks to Philip Wheeler, the former Dolphin. Now keep an eye on this down of Remmers. Remmers was beat by Freeney. Remmers, normally the right tackle, is playing left tackle for the injured Michael Orr. Freeney took him to the house last time. It's number 74. Remmers started every game at right tackle last year for the Panthers, has played some in that spot, left tackle, third and three. Newton, and off the fingertips of Ted Ginn Jr., who was wide open on the left side. So that possession squandered, and Andy Lee will come in to kick for Carolina. This is bad footwork by Newton. Remmers is pretty solid, but watch the footwork by Newton. Watch his feet. Is he stepping to his target? No. His left foot never went to the target, so he's off balance. And as a result, because of the poor footwork in the, in the left foot not going to the target, a missed overthrow. To a wide open receiver. Eric Weems, and it bounces, takes a Carolina bounce. Can they down it before it goes into the end zone? And they do. Down at about the two yard line by Colin Jones. So a rough two first possessions for Cam Newton. Falcons with the ball deep in their own end. Matt Ryan has had good ball distribution so far this year. Starting from the two yard line, passing from the end zone, has the receiver and it's Kevin Coleman, the running back, and Coleman will have a first down. Now speaking about the ball distribution, Julio Jones, Seven targets last week, one catch. Getting involved early, and I'm telling you, when he's involved, that alerts defenses, and what that does for the offense is it opens up other guys, and Atlanta's done a good job of winning the one-on-one -on -one battles, and Matt Ryan sees the field as well as any quarterback in the National Football League. We saw how Tammy benefited from it, and some of these other receivers, and they have a lot more deep receiving core than they've had in recent years. First and 10 from the 13. Play action for Ryan from the five-yard line. And a good catch is made by Patrick DeMarco, the fullback. You don't often see the fullback go downfield for a catch as a receiver and a first down to the 31, a pickup of 18. Well, you talk about a quarterback being responsible for a blitzer. Sometimes you can't block them all. And right here, Tom, or that's Davis coming in. He's going to take a shot by him. Blitzing on that play. That vacated the area where DeMarco was able to make the catch. And Matt Ryan's going to deliver a strike when he has that much time. And Ryan is 7 for 7 to start this game. 
Sorry. Here's Tevin Coleman, and Coleman, they can run, and Coleman may have yet another first down. A flag is down. Coleman picks up 11 or so yards, but there's another penalty. And it looks to be a holding call against Atlanta at first blush. Holding. Offense number 51. 10-yard penalty from the previous spot. First down. That's the veteran center, Alex Mack. And for game break, let's join Kurt Benefee. This Sam Christina. Coming off a win over the Cardinals against an undefeated Patriot team. Sometimes coaching changes make a difference. It can galvanize troops. New offensive coordinator in Buffalo. Made a big difference. First down and 16. And Ryan is going to go deep for Julio Jones. And Jones makes the catch. Julio Jones to the 31-yard line. Covered by Darrell Worley, a rookie from West Virginia. And a huge gain of 44 for the Falcons. You know there's a miscommunication in the back end. As you're going to see Julio Jones. Clean release, no contact. He's too fast for Worley. Now after this play, 26 Worley's going to look up. And he's going to turn to his safety with his hands up. Where were you? And when I see a where were you, you see 20's helmet come into that pitcher. That's a miscommunication, and that's been a problem in the back end for the Panthers defense. First down at the 32. Jones with four catches already for 94 yards. So he's back in it. And so is Devontae Freeman, who's back in it off the left side. He has a first down and ridden out of bounds near the 10-yard line by Benave Ben Wickery. So this Falcon offense starting from the two-yard line. Right now they're on the 13 of Carolina. Uh, they're they're on their heels. I mean, you're, you're looking at a defense that does not know what to do, and they do not have an answer. And I maintain to you, Dick Stockton, to slow this down, to give yourself a chance, you still have to start bringing people on first down. They haven't yet. 19-yard yep. pickup. Scored from the red zone the last time they had the ball. Freeman up the middle. Freeman scores. Give a little center some love, Alex Mack, the big free agent, taking on the best middle linebacker in the game, Luke Keekley. Getting to the second level, hands in win. You see him flip those hips into the side of the hole where the running back was going, Dick? That's execution. You don't have to be a killer in there. You have to have great position. Great job, Alex Mack. And here's Matt Bryan, and he makes it 14 to nothing. So the Carolina Panthers are wondering What's hit them? Well, it's been the Atlanta offense. First touchdown of the year for Devontae Freeman and his 14 to zip. 98-yard drive, and Freeman's 13-yard touchdown run caps it. Julio Jones with a 43-yard reception on the verge of getting 100 already. And so if you're Carolina, you've been hit with a haymaker so far, Chris. I think you just... Absorb the punch to do what you do and trust in the process and your guys. And Panthers will take it out at the 25. We'll get ready for the Major League Baseball postseason where all that matters is October. The National League Division Series starts Friday on FS1. Wild card standings, the Mets are in. Will it be San Francisco or St. Louis as the second wild card in the National League? And everyone is going to be chasing the Chicago Cubs. And uh, Atlanta Braves fan here, they played playing their last game at Turner Field today later on. Panthers from the 25. And the keeper by... Newton and he takes it out to the 32 yard line as we wind down to the end of this first quarter six yard game for Cam Newton who finds his team trailing 14 to nothing.
So here's the Georgia Dome. It's been Matt Ryan. Two impressive drives. Julio Jones nearing 100 yards. 14 to nothing Falcons. First two possessions for the Panthers regard, regarding punts. They had one yard, then 29 yards. And they're starting here at the 31. Their best starting position so far. Cameron Artis Payne is the running back for Newton. It'll be second down and four as we start the second quarter. And the pass is knocked away, intended for Ginn, and it was Robert Alford. Talked to Dan Quinn yesterday and what he needed to see from his defense. And so far, they're getting a better tackling. Too many missed tackles in the first three ball games. That's one of the reasons why you got 30 plus. You're giving up and eliminate explosive plays defined by 16 yards per pass and 12 yards per run. So far, they've answered his challenge in the first quarter. And they beat the Panthers here in December, the only regular season loss suffered by Carolina. Third down and four. Quick toss. And it's caught by Fozzie Whitaker, and Whitaker will have the first down. Got a lot of extra yards, tight roping down the sideline, and gets into Falcon territory. Ricardo Allen makes the play, but not before the pass and run net 22. You know, one of the things I love about Cam Newton is his ability to stand in the pocket and take the shot. And this is a good job of Cam seeing the field, understanding the pressure, and finding a wide open Fozzie Whitaker and better footwork that time allowed him to deliver the strike. That was Adrian Claiborne who knocked him down. So a first down at the 47 of the Falcons. Here's the pressure again on Newton and the pass is caught, but good defense. Fozzie Whitaker makes the catch. He's tackled at midfield by Philip Wheeler and the Panthers will lose a yard. Darrell Washington, now he's the right tackle because Remmers will up over the left tackle for war. And he got beat right there, forcing that screen. Did not give it a time. Daryl Williams, not Washington, excuse me. Did not give time for that screen to set up. He's got to hold and sustain a little bit longer before he releases. Second and 11. Quick out to Funches. And Funches is... Stopped about five yards shy of the first down by both Desmond Trufant and Brian Poole, but he gets nine yards. Third down and short coming up for the Panthers. Number 78 is reported as eligible. 78 is reported as eligible. They haven't been bad on third down conversion so far in this game. By the way, Donald Hawkins once again an extra offensive lineman reports. And Atlanta will call a timeout. That's the second, second timeout called by the Falcons here in the first half. Back here at the Georgia Dome, Dick Stockton, Chris Spielman, and Christina Pink. Falcons are down to one timeout left in the half. Newton has a third down and three on the Falcon 40 and Cam Newton is going to be trapped in losing yard it's Vic Beasley Jr. you mentioned him at the outset they need the pass rush from him today well this is zone read again and it's their money thing when they want a short yard it should end to me right here this is a poor read he should have given the ball to Tolbert again the timing of that is not what it needs to be it's not clean when you have guys bumping into each other Right there, he should have given the ball to Tolbert. Tolbert would have got the three. But when you have guys bumping each into each other, then he cannot pull the ball cleanly and get into his running form smoothly. Loss of three yards. Andy Lee trying to keep it in the field to play. And the Panthers do a good job of keeping it just before it goes into the end zone. Robert McLean with a super play. Well, small screen, stadium size content. Watch live local Sunday games on your smartphone with NFL Mobile. So now let's see what, well, we saw what Matt Ryan did starting from the two. He drove his team 98 yards for a touchdown last time. Now he'll start from the one. 
Cam working with Derek Anderson on the Microsoft Surface. I used to have Polaroids that I had to deal with. These guys are taping up virtual reality over there. And one thing Derek should say is, look, get with the running backs now. If we're going to run the read option, we got to stop running in each other because it's screwing up the timing of the play. Touchdowns on the first two possessions for the Falcons. And Matt Ryan, who is 8 for 8 and 133 yards so far. Short drop in the end zone, and the pass out to Julio Jones is complete out to the six. For a game break, here's Kurt Menefee. <laughs> One of four coast-to-coast -coast trips for the Seahawks. They're, they're, they're used to I, I maintain it's easier for them to come east than it is for a team to go west. Second down and five. And the pass is tipped, and it is intercepted, and run in for the touchdown by Kurt Coleman. And the Panthers are back in the game. Deflected by Thomas Davis, and Kurt Coleman did the rest. The turnover and the Panther touchdown. And they quickly get back in early here in the second quarter. Well, the veteran making a play, number 58, Thomas Davis, who will come into your screen eventually, not being able to get there, but gets his hands in the air to cause the deflection, and Coleman sitting in zone was able to get a great break on the ball, turn around just like that. And how about the hands of Thomas Davis? Done it for years under adverse circumstances. Graham Gano with the extra point, and the Falcon lead is cut to 14 to 7. That's how quickly you get back in the game. Turnover, pick six for the Panthers. Matt Ryan's uh, first incompletion, and it was even worse than that. It was an interception run in for a touchdown. Thomas Davis made it happen. And a second career interception return for a score by Coleman. And Davis, of course, the only NFL player who's ever Recovered and returned from three ACL tears. Wow. Tough guy. And the Falcons will take it out at the 25. Well, October 8th is Super Saturday on FS1 at 11 a.m. Eastern. It's a huge college football rivalry as Texas faces Oklahoma. Then at 3.30, it's Game 2 of the National League Division Series. And at 7, it's UFC 204 prelims. So catch all the action on Super Saturday on FS1. Kevin Coleman... Starts this possession as the setback. First down from the 25. And here is Coleman with the carry and gets about a yard. Coney Ely was there. Coleman with three rushing touchdowns last Monday night against New Orleans. In the second year, but what a one-two punch that they have at running back. Uh, both guys are capable of being three down backs, both excellent pass protectors and great hands out of the backfield. Freeman has scored a touchdown today on the ground. His first, he had caught one for a score earlier. Second down and nine, and they go again, and ball almost jarred loose as Coleman is hit by Keekley. So that'll bring up third down and long. So Ryan is going to the air early in the possession. Starts with a couple of runs, and now it looks like a pass is in order. Well, uh, and uh, with Carolina, they're such a big zone team. You have to understand where the first down marker is. Do not drop past the sticks and hug up and match up. We've got to get almost to the 35. Taylor Gabriel is in motion to the right. And here comes pressure from the secondary on Ryan, but this pass is caught. Catch by Taylor Gabriel, one of the new receivers on this team who can all run. Yeah, Thomas Dimitrov, the general manager, was talking to us out of practice about what he brings to the table. And Gabriel is a guy with speed and with the soft cushion coverage. Matt Ryan seeing Kirk Coleman coming off the blitz of that edge. Understand that's the weakness of the defense, and that's where I will attack. 
11 yard pickup Gabriel formerly with the Browns Sanu and Aldrick Robinson as well added it's a first down play action and Ryan has a world of time and he's going to go deep for guess who Julio Jones and a super play made downfield by Benet Ben Wickery knocking them away classic coverage there it's all about the discipline and the discipline of not biting on double moves right here. First of all, he stayed with Julio Jones. The ball is underthrown, which allowed Ben Wickery to get that left hand in there. The discipline, Dick, not to pass interfere. How many times do we see it? Right. And going right after the football, getting that right arm up in between his arms. But it started earlier in the play without the double move. He is the third cornerback to defend Julio Jones already in this first half. It'll be second and ten. Four receivers, empty backfield. Ryan goes down at the 32. And play made by Love. Kyle Love, who was re-signed weeks after he was the final cut. Well, it's just a really good push inside by the Panthers. And that's a play before. Ben Wickery again with the discipline, but that last play was good push by Law to knock it in there. So it's now third down and 17. Third and 17. Ryan going deep, and the receiver Jones is there to make the play. He had beaten the defender by about six yards. Is tackled at the 15, beating Ben Wickery for the long one. A huge gain of 53 yards. Now I don't, I don't pretend to be the smartest guy in the world, but on third and 17, I think if I'm Ben Wickery, I'm going to take care of Julio Jones down the field. <laughs> you think? And, and, and if you're playing that type of coverage, don't look back at the quarterback. If he's his, if the receiver's head isn't back, your head isn't back. You're in a sprint with the receiver to the ball. Six catches for 152 yards for Julio Jones. And first down, the pass up the middle to Tevin Coleman, and he's hit immediately by Keekley. And a gain of about four yards. So what a first half for Julio Jones. Gone over 100 for the 30th time in his career, and who knows what he could get today. Yeah, let's look, put him on record watch. I don't even know what the record is, but he's on my watch. We're going to have our crack research team go through the books. 152 yards. Second down and eight. And the handoff to Kevin Coleman, and Coleman diving inside the 10. There's a reason why this offense is so prolific because it's so balanced and we talk about all the skilled players the Falcons present that offensive line is as good as any offensive line in the game today because they move people they double and get to the second level. That's why Tevin Coleman get five yards a pop. They're underrated. You don't hear about them. Much. They, you should hear about them because they're good. Tevin Coleman started out wide left. Now back in the backfield on third and four. They've got to get to the five-yard line. And there comes the pressure. And the pass is caught by Tammy, but he was down on the ground, couldn't get up. And so fourth down coming up. And Matt Bryant will come on to try a field goal. They had a play. And they scored last week against New Orleans when they swung the ball to Freeman. So they faked the swing to Freeman. They had Tammy sitting up on a nice little middle screen right there. The problem is he lost his balance. Because I'm telling you, if he did not fall down, Dick, they had a play in the end zone. Looked like he had clear sailing in front of him. So Matt Bryant is on. It'll be a 28-yard attempt. And Matt Bryant's kick is good. Perfect this year, but he has not had to kick from 40 yards or beyond. That's not a bad assignment. 17-7, the Falcons. That youngster's having a blast, and his dad as well, because their man, Julio Jones, with an incredible first half so far, six catches for 152 yards. Thought Carolina might 
be spurred on by that interception and touchdown but they let the Falcons get downfield to score some points well and they have no answer you, you have to find an answer they're trying three different guys so far in Julio and, and no one's provided the answer Ted Ginn will just watch this and the Panthers will start from the 25 so under six minutes remaining in the first half and the Falcons lead the Panthers by 10. Panthers came in the game as the number three rushing team in the league, but they've managed only 12 yards on the ground so far. Jonathan Stewart out for the second straight game, by the way. He's their leading ball carrier with a hamstring. And throwing on first down is Cam Newton. And it is caught by Corey Brown. And it'll be a first down out to the 36. You know, one of the reasons why they only have 12 yards is the timing of the runs. They're trying to run a zone read. You got guys running into each other. Then you have to reach. And every little detail of timing that's not precise, it helps the defense get off a block. And right there again, knocking into Tolbert and, and Newton colliding. This is the timing of the zone read. Well, the penalties continue to affect the Panthers. Not totally great protection on Cam Newton so far, and on a first down, looking to run and will. First down. No sliding for Cam Newton as he gets into Atlanta territory. And a first down after picking up 22 yards. That's well, such a weapon, and what a luxury for a play caller to have this type of play in your game. And not many NFL teams do, but it's just a quarterback draw. And it starts off right here by Cam Newton being patient enough to let the linemen engage in their blocks. And Kelvin Benjamin disciplined enough not to grab on on Trufant, allowing Cam to get the extra seven. Came into the game with two rushing touchdowns to lead the team. And a first down at the 43 of the Falcons. They'll hand it off to Artis Payne. And Payne, with good yardage on first down, picks up about five or six yards. You know, Dick, I, I know that it doesn't seem like much, but right there was a clean exchange between the quarterback and the running back. And that's the details that the Panthers offense has not been taken care of this year. Right there was well executed. You don't even expect to say that about a pro team, right? Uh, let's execute the handoff. Well, that's the first handoff they executed. We saw the problem earlier in the game. Hardest pain for about a yard. That'll bring up third down and a... A long three, Philip Wheeler making the tackle. Falcons with two explosive touchdowns, taking a 14 to nothing lead. And Ryan, who has completed 13 of 50, to Jones, who has six for 152 yards, and Carolina's whose touchdown coming on an interception. Trying to fight back. Donald Hawkins, an extra offensive lineman on third and three. There he is. And Newton gets hit as he throws, and the pass is incomplete. That was pressure by the Falcons that paid off there in the person of Rashid Hackman. Right, if you have all these offensive linemen in an unbalanced line, and you want to throw the ball, you're not fooling anybody on third and three because third and three in the NFL is pass. What I'm telling you is put your regular personnel in the ball game. And there's Cam Noon being off balance again, which is a problem when he missed. But if you're going to run a third and three play, run it with your best players that can convert third and three. Don't go out and balance in that situation. Graham Gano will try a 54-yard field goal here. And it's on the mark, and the kick is good. So Gano, who has just missed two field goals this year, his longest of the year, and the Panthers now trail by a score of 17 to 10. So Gano with the 54-yard field goal, and the Panthers are one touchdown behind after all of that explosiveness by the Falcons with 3.07 remaining in the half. Keep in mind that the Falcons have only one timeout remaining. I don't think that makes a difference with Julio Jones and, and Matt Ryan. And, and, and again, I know this is I'm simplifying the game, but if I'm talking to my coach in the Panthers secondary, hey, Julio Jones can go deep. So, deep is the deepest. It's a good rule to follow. 
Weems is back there. And this one sails out of the end zone. What a first half for this man. Well, and again, one catch last week, but now a big part of this offense, short passes, long passes, over-the-head passes. There are many people think, and I might be one of them after today, that he's the best of the game to be able to track that deep ball like he does. He's a special talent, and with him having the success, Dick, that he's having, that opens up the whole field for Matt Ryan to work with as long as they can sustain protection. A lot of other targets that he can go to if they take Jones away, but they haven't yet. Two rookies started on him, and then Ben Wickery, and he had no luck either. From the 25, first down. And the handoff to Freeman off the left side goes out of bounds after a pickup of five, and there's a flag down at the 24. Jake Matthews. It'll be a hold against Atlanta. Holding offense number 70. 10 yard penalty. First down. On the left tackle. He has his hands inside, but Ely does a good job of creating separation. Forcing Jake to bring it in just a little, holding on a little bit too long. Back up to the 15. First down and 20. They put Freeman out as a receiver to the left. Empty backfield. And on the run, pass tipped and caught by Julio Jones. And Jones only about a yard and a half from a first down. It was tipped by Luke Keekley, and it winds up to be an 18 yard gain for the Falcons. When it's going, it's going. When you're hot, you're hot, and you ride the hot horse because Keekley Hexer did a fantastic job of playing a double move on Julio Jones and just does not have the vert that 11 has. And Julio stays with it, brings it in. That's the key. He stood with it. Second down and two. Play action. Here comes the pressure. And Ryan is going to be sacked back at the 25 by Keekley. Can't keep him out for long. Maybe the best in the league in what he does at middle linebacker, Luke Keekley. This is the two minute warning. And the two minute warning is here. <laughs> Follow your favorite team all season long. Go to iTunes.com slash NFL. Two minutes remaining in the first half. Third down and nine for Matt Ryan and the Falcons. Can't find a receiver. Then he lost it out of bounds. Smart move by him. Smart move by the Panthers, which they came with the blitz. The last down, this down, they showed blitz, played zone, and they matched up. They didn't go out there and cover dirt. They matched up. That's why Matt Ryan had to throw the ball and give away a souvenir. Have the Panthers not done that? much in this first half well, in the first quarter they didn't but then they started getting a little bit more aggressive on first and second down and that's what we talked about and they started to adjust to that Matt Bodger punting first time the Falcons have had the punt and it's a beauty Ted Ginn at the 18 but the Falcons with terrific coverage and it's Josh Harris the long snapper who makes the play Time for a game break, and let's check in now with Carissa Thompson. Her could be a good road win against Todd Bowles' team if Seattle can go on and win this game. Meanwhile, here we have a minute 41, and the Panthers have all three of their timeouts remaining. Down by a touchdown. That's Fozzie Whitaker moving out to the left. And the pass up top. And first time Greg Olson has been targeted all game. Keanu Neal, the number one pick from the University of Florida, downfield with him. And Dan Quinn really excited about Neal. Not only because he's a big hitter, but more importantly in this league is he can do that. He can get up on a tight end and play man to man and not get separated. With this good discipline, not reaching in. 
Playing the eyes, not looking back. Beautiful job by Neal. You can cover tight ends, and that's a bonus for any defense. Second and ten. Newton not going to get away from Dwight Freeney. Second sack of the game for the veteran. Spent most of his career with the Colts. And that'll set the ball back to the 17. There's Freeney right here working on Remmers, number 74. Remember the natural right tackle for the Panthers, now playing left. And he hit him with the fake spin move. Earlier in the, in the earlier pressure, he had him the spin move. This is why he's a veteran and he's crafty, because he has a counter punch for every counter punch that he throws. That's beautiful. Has a little savvy. No? Yes, yeah, a little <laughs> moxie and savvy. <laughs> That's right. Go back to the 40s for that. There you go. Loss of eight yards. Third down and 18. Got a lot of receivers going out for Cam Newton, but he goes underneath to Fozzie Whitaker. Whitaker does not, I don't think, he may have it. The linesman has marked the ball at the 36, and he may have the first down. The clock stops with 38 seconds remaining, and ultimately Keanu Neal undercut him. Otherwise, it would have been a clear first down. And a timeout. We're going to check in in Los Angeles. What does Kurt Manafee have in store? All right, coming up on the Visa Halftime Show, we'll check in on all the games going on around the National Football League. And Gaga, who are you going for in the Super Bowl? Um, are you still playing for the Giants? No. The Giants. Oh, <laughs> it's all coming up on the Visa Halftime. I'm just kidding, man. <laughs> well, you never know what you're going to see from those guys as we get set for the halftime. But Carolina, by the way, called a timeout there first. You know, you look at that last play, and because it's important to know that what's hurt the Falcons on defense more than anything is missed tackles. Brian Poole had a chance to get him short before the sticks, and he did not. Carolina keeps the chains moving. First down. Pressure. Newton getting away, being chased again, and throws this one away. Grady Jarrett was the first, and then Brooks Reed came on for Atlanta, and that will bring up a second down and 10, but the clock showing only 28 seconds. And Cam getting up slow right there under pressure by Brooks Reed, as you mentioned, Dick. Effort, but again, forced out of the pocket because of the weakness of the offensive tackles. And that's been a problem for this Panther team all year. They had a problem with Orr last week at left tackle against the Vikings. And this time, Williams and Remmers are struggling. And they've shuffled that offensive line with Remmers moving from right to left and Orr out because of the concussion protocol. Darrell Williams starting at right tackle. And a timeout called by Carolina. We'll be back. By the way, Cam Newton was shaken up. Took him a while to get up. Was helped by a trainer, but apparently all right. Well, he's taken a beating all season long, hasn't he? Second and 10 with 34 seconds remaining in the first half. And a swing pass out to White Whitaker. Fozzie Whitaker stopped about three yards shy of the first down by Kamal Ishmael after picking up eight yards third and, final and 25 seconds to go and the Panthers call their third and final timeout Falcons defense and a prevent nothing over the head and good counter by Shula the offensive coordinator to come in with his screen playing for field goal position right here There's no panic in Ron Rivera he knows he has a good football team they just need to get timing and get rhythm on that offense Coach Shula right there. Good play caller. Lost only one regular season game. Two games overall after losing to Denver in the Super Bowl. They've won three straight NFC South titles. Third down and two. No timeouts remaining. And Cam up the middle. And a good defensive play made by Brian Poole on Corey Brown. Undrafted rookie out of the University of Florida. 
So Neal and Poole, two former Gators contributing here. Yeah, Corey Brown had a step on Poole, and the ball's a little underthrown by Cam. You got to put that out in front, and anytime you could come underneath and knock it away, that ball's only thrown because on a long ball, the rule is if you're long, you're never wrong. Either your guy gets it or nobody gets it. 19 seconds remaining, and Andy Lee will be kicking. Eric Weems will let this one bounce. And the Panthers again do the job. They down the ball inside the five yard line, and that was Robert McLean. That's the second time he has made a play like that. Nine seconds remain in the half, and you know there'll be nothing fancy coming from Atlanta. Well, reminder coming up the Visa halftime report. Lady Gaga is in the studio, as we've already seen on the promo. Jacksonville beating Indy in London and the Patriots offense having some problems and so is Cam Newton as he goes into the locker room early. Remember he was shaken up when the Panthers called their last time out. Taking a knee and that will do it. Well, the Atlanta Falcons coming out strong with spectacular offensive showing and the combination of Matt Ryan and Julio Jones. Jones having a monster first half with seven catches for 170 yards. Freeman with a 13 yard touchdown run. Carolina is down by seven, but there's no question, Chris Fieldman, that the, the Falcons have really uh, dominated Carolina in this first half. Well, well they have. And you get the feeling it should be more but where the where the answers have been made right here the Carolina when they were successful they got their running game going a little bit not necessarily with their running backs they got it with Cam Newton the Falcons defense has been solid that first half solid that first half that's the score at halftime and we now go to Kurt Benefi in Los Angeles for the visa halftime report which starts now this excitement is brought to you by the new Nissan Titan That was today's excitement brought to you by the new Nissan Titan. Half time at 17 to 10. The Falcons lead the Panthers. And we're ready for the second half kickoff. Now Atlanta gets it first. What's the mindset here? Because uh, Carolina has been dominated, but they're only down by seven. Now I think that Atlanta just do what you did in the first half. Control the ball and find a way to get Julio Jones. Keep him involved. Weems bobbles it. In trouble at the goal line and tackled right at the goal line. And they're going to give him the yardage at the one. David Mayo was right in on him. The ruling on the field as the ball was touched by the receiving team in the field of play. Recovered on the one yard line. Atlanta's ball, first down. You gotta keep your composure under that type of situation. Composed enough to keep it out of the end zone. The last three times Atlanta was in this position disregard the quarterback kneel down they went play action pass so if you're Carolina you have to be alert uh, play action pass and if I'm Carolina I'm sending blitz I'm going to trust that my guy can take Julio Jones and I'm coming after him. well now's the time to do it if you're Carolina you want to get back into this game they tried already once to do that first and ten Freeman wide right from the end zone and the pass is going to be caught by Taylor Gabriel and they get out of danger there well we have seen the Falcons start from the two and get a touchdown from the one and an interception get out of trouble here yeah, and they trust their offensive line and Matt Ryan not to hold the ball in the end zone to threaten the sack right there working one on one with Gabriel on Worley a matchup obviously they like so it's the same old story as we start this third quarter with Atlanta getting 19 yards on first down starting from the one and just it's Matt Ryan understanding defenses exploiting the weakness of the defense and delivering the ball on time and on target Boy, this team looks sharp offensively today other than that turnover and his Devontae Freeman and Freeman gets about six yards on first down as we send it down following the penalty call holding offense number 67 10 yard penalty 
first down. Andy Levitri called for a holding. We'll send it down to Christina Pink. Thank you, Dick. Well, I spoke to Panthers head coach Ron Rivera at the half, who told me there's no concern over quarterback Cam Newton, who retreated back to the locker room early after landing on his right shoulder. Cam was shaken up on the play. We would see him wincing at the end of the half, but coach told me he'll be back out there. He's tough. I also asked him, how do you solve the problem of defending Julio Jones, who has 170 yards in the game? He said the real issue is we're not getting to the quarterback. Let's see if they can make some adjustments here. Back to you, Dick. All right, Christina. Cam Newton at 6'5", 250, can handle some punishment first down and 20 line in trouble goes underneath to Devontae Freeman and Freeman picks up a couple and there's another penalty marker down K1 short made a statement on that particular play he forced Matt Ryan to pull that ball down and that's what it will shift offense number 12 he never came set prior to the snap. That's on Sanu. That penalty is declined. Second down. That's what Ron was talking to Christina about. Every t everybody thinks pressure always has to come for the edges. The key right there is 99 by pushing that pocket. And he was a flat-out beast right there. Most of Atlanta's pressure in the first half came up the middle. So it'll be second down and 19 from the 11. Two penalties already on the Falcons on this possession. And there's the pass, and it is caught, and it'll be a first down to Gabriel. Taylor Gabriel's been nursing a hamstring pull, and they've added wide receivers, all of whom can run, and that includes Gabriel, who makes a big catch and a 20-yard gain first down for the Falcons. Just like in Atlanta did in the first half, they're going up-tempo again. After a big play, no huddle, get to the line. Gabriel's showing the vert. Kevin Coleman in the game. They fake to him, and Ryan in trouble gets away from a defender and goes the other way and incomplete to Levine Toilolo, who was hit as he caught the ball or tried to catch it by Shaq Thompson. Matt Ryan has presence in the pocket and understands pocket movement just by shrugging his shoulders. He gets away from Kirk Coleman and Tevin Coleman on Coleman. Does not do his job in solidifying, but Matt Ryan, just a little shoulder shimmy right there to be able to get rid of that football and play as he takes the shot from Charles Johnson. A pretty good turn, though, that he made to get the ball off. Second and 10. Here's Coleman. Gets hit immediately and is stopped at the 30. No gain. Good penetration that time by LeVar Edwards. Let's see if the Panthers can create pressure without bringing five or six. And K1 Short, who's not in, but love number 77 is in, had a sack in that first half, and he got good pressure up the middle last time he was there. Third and 10. Ryan. On the run, in stride, completes the pass to Mohamed Sanu. And it'll be another Falcon first down. They're using all their receivers, not just Julio Jones, who's had a whale of a game. He is the seventh receiver to catch a pass, and that speaks to the ball distribution we talked about earlier. And an injured Panther is Thomas Davis. Davis is shaken up and will take a timeout. Still early in this third quarter. Back here at the Georgia Dome. Falcons started from their one. Thomas Davis shaken up. They have five defensive backs in there, just two linebackers. And a first down at the 48. Quickly out to Kevin Coleman. And Coleman may lose a yard thanks to Luke Keekley. Be very close. He covers more ground than anybody in the middle linebacker position. Just everything on pass, on run. And people ask me what makes Luke so great. And the two things that I love in linebackers, first of all, is vision. He has great vision. But the most important trait that a linebacker has is instincts. And that can also be defined as a nose for the ball. You had them both. It. You had them both. Uh, not like that. Well, you had them. 
Pro Bowl four times, All Pro three. Second down and ten. Quick release, and Julio Jones manages to hold on to the ball. Ben Wickery was all over him, short of the first down by about a yard now. Size, speed, and strength. The other beautiful thing about this is able to beat press coverage with his strength, and he goes up and snags or plucks the football out of the air and has strong hands. He's just the total package at that position. Tough matchup, not only for Ben Wickery, but any corner. Mm -hmm. Nine yards there, eight catches, 179 yards on the day. Freeman is in there, and they move Coleman in as well. Freeman gets the call and just may have enough for the first down. It was a third down and one, and it is a first down for the Falcons. In Panther territory, now to the 42. And Thomas Davis is back into the game. Good news for Carolina. First and ten. And here is Ryan. And Ryan is going deep and all alone is Austin Hooper for the touchdown. Nobody within miles of him. Third round pick out of Stanford. And it was almost, Chris, like they were playing 11 on 10. What it looked like. And, and Kyle Shanahan is calling a great game. And the reason being because they have a threat of a running game, which allows Matt Ryan to set up the play action. And he's just dealer's choice. And he has time. He's too good because he surveys and sees the field better than any quarterback in the National Football League. 42-yard touchdown pass from... Matt Ryan, his second TD pass of the game, and the first NFL touchdown, keeping the football, of course, is Austin Hooper. Now Matt Bryant with the extra point, and Atlanta has opened up a two-touchdown lead, 24 to 10. That easy. That's Austin Hooper who caught the touchdown pass. So eight different receivers have caught balls from Matt Ryan today. And so the Falcons have had touchdown drives from 99 and 98 yards. It's pretty good work in one game. And they're so balanced is what's making them so difficult to defend. And on that last touchdown, when we get to the replay, you'll see eight guys sucked up to the line of scrimmage, which allowed Austin Hooper to clear free all the way from the back side from being wide open on a bootleg. Ted Ginn is back. And they'll start from the 25. Watch all these guys, Dick. They're all going to get sucked up. Austin Hooper is going to be patient. Is going to come right around here. And Matt Ryan is going to be patient. When you have all linebackers are sucked up like that which they shouldn't be by the way and I'm going to tell you why in a second it's an easy pitch and catch for Austin Hooper a delivery of a strike now why they shouldn't be sucked up because the offensive lineman when it's a run their shoulders will stay square to the line of scrimmage when it's a play action pass their shoulders are vertical with the sidelines that's a read that those linebackers have to make so they can get the tight end on a deep route or a bootleg down by two touchdowns that need something from the offense pressure on Cam Newton and the pass out to Olsen is incomplete. NFL plays 60 the NFL's movement for a more active generation encourages fans to get moving and play for 60 minutes every day. Learn how you can join the NFL play 60 movement at NFL.com slash play 60. Olsen has been no factor so far in this game. Not caught a pass. Second down and ten. Artis Payne picks it up for four yards. 
Talk about Olsen not being a factor. Kelvin Benjamin not a factor. There's only one reception. It was for 21 yards, but that was eons ago. Third down and seven. Okay, Freeney on Remmers. Freeney had a sack and a, and a quarterback knockdown in the first half. Let's see if Remmers can handle him. Fozzie Whitaker is the back for Newton. He gets protection here and throws that one incomplete, and it was intended for Benjamin. That time, Vic Beasley Jr. had some good pressure in on Cam Newton, so it'll be fourth down, and Andy Lee is in again. So he's got to make the throw. You got, a, you got a chance to convert. You got your guy, Kelvin Benjamin, working one-on-one. -on -one. And I maintain to you that his footwork is off. His feet are parallel when he throws. He is not stepping to the target. When that right foot and left foot are equal or parallel, you're going to be high or you're going to miss wide. And that's twice so far his footwork has been in disarray. Looks like off balance, doesn't yes. it? All the time. Here's Weems on the return. And Weems is tackled with a flag down at the 26. 56-yard punt, but a penalty. Here's John Hussey. Hey Dick, Dick I, we're going to get to the penalty, but that's that's a little bit of a problem because his mechanics are off a little bit with his feet parallel. And then when your feet are parallel, your accuracy, you have no control of where that ball is going. We have seen Cam Newton frustrated before in these situations. During the kick, holding receiving team number 34. That 10-yard penalty will be enforced from the end of the kick. First down, timeout. 10-yard penalty, Brian Poole holding. So uh, Cam Newton, 10 of 19 for 102. Frustrating, the offense has not been able to click yet. Their only touchdown came on the defensive side. That's the College Football Hall of Fame, which has uh, moved to Atlanta. And uh, honored to be next to somebody who's a member of the College Football Hall of Fame, Chris Spielman. And the first down run by Kevin Coleman. When you visit one of the enshrinees you'll learn about is Chris Spielman, who was inducted in 2009 from his great play at Ohio State. Carried it on to the professional ranks. Fortunately, he shaved. Yeah, the better thing is the mustache. I mean, in fact, that, that, that's coming back. And you know what? You were on the cover of Wheaties. A lot of people <laughs> yeah. wish they were. Pass thrown incomplete to Coleman. You know? Oh, how about that? In Maslin, Ohio, and the people in Maslin did a good job and found myself up on a Wheaties box. You know, it's interesting. You know, what feels good today. Noah Spielman, your son. Because Noah Spielman was uh, with the winning Wheaton team that beat Illinois Wesleyan yesterday. 34 unanswered points. So yeah. good for him, huh? Yeah, the Thunder took care of the, the Titans in the CCIW. A strong conference in Division Three football. Huge game. Third down and three. So far, it's been huge for the Falcons. Ball on the 15. And Matt Ryan. And the pass is caught by Julio Jones. He's made some... Tough catches today, Chris, as well as going deep and finding the open spaces. This is the strength, and we talk about this a lot, is when you have the ability to, to box out. He stops his slant route because Keekley was coming from the inside, and this is a quarterback and receiver being on the same page. Watch Julio is going to stop his slant route right here. See, he's going to stop and not bring it because if he brings it, Keekley's going to put him on his highlight film. But the ability to stop and knowing that Matt Ryan will throw him open. Now 184 yards, nine catches. That's what he had last December here in the win over the Panthers. First and ten. Play action. Get rid of it fast. Had no chance. And a great rush by LeVar Edwards, the former Buffalo Bill. Right now, let's send it down to Christina Pink. Hey, Dick. Well, when I spoke to Dan Quinn at halftime, he reminded me that Julio Jones is a special player. He said that one catch game from last week, that was an outlier. If you don't do unique things to defend him, he's going to make plays. And he said even though he had those seven catches, 170 yards just in the first half, he said you're going to see much more of him in the third and fourth quarter. And well, he, he didn't get frustrated, uh, but you know what? He said he never let us know that he was. And Christina and Dick, it's incumbent upon the coaching staff to find ways to get him the ball, creative ways to get him the ball. Second down and 10. And this time, 
Pass is incomplete. Aldrick Robinson in a fight with Ben Wickery, and Ben Wickery won that one. A beautiful job by Ben Wickery right there. Playing solid man to man, not getting turned. And his hands went up when the receiver's hands went up. Outstanding effort right there. Third and 10 for the Falcons, leading 24 to 10. Trying to go to 3 and 1 and stay in first place in the NFC South. About six of eight conversions on third down for the Falcons. Here's your matchup right there with Matt Ryan. There it is. And they got another one. Julio Jones hit once, hit twice, and gets into Panther territory. No stopping that combination today. That is the 10th catch of the game by Jones, and it's good for 32 yards. So my mom texted me and said, Chris, you're going to throw to Julio because he's one-on-one -on -one against Ben Wickery. And the reason why, this is just easy right here. It's just a communication understanding that Julio Jones is one-on-one -on -one with Ben Wickery. He hasn't been able to handle him all day. What makes think anybody's going to handle him now? It's just too easy. Second career 200-yard game for Julio Jones. Ken ca catches for 216 yards. And this is Devontae Freeman and Thomas Davis, who was shaken up earlier, is there to make the stop. But the story of the game has been this explosive offense leading the NFL. And he has been nothing short of sensational as Julio Jones today. It's just a threat. Deep, short, strong, fast, everything you want. Second and 10 at the 48. And there's the slant and another first down, this time to Aldrich Robinson. Once again, we're seeing the depth of this receiving core that the Falcons have this year. We talked about it in the first half, and we'll reiterate it now. Is Atlanta's going a little bit of tempo because of rhythm, but receivers like Gabriel and Robinson bring speed with the big bodies of Sanu and Julio. 13-yard pickup, ninth receiver to catch a Matt Ryan pass today was Aldrich Robinson. And a first down at the 35. And going up top, there's a receiver there. And did he keep both feet in for the touchdown? Yes, he did! Aldrich Robinson with the touchdown! Thirty-five yards to Robinson. They'll review it all. Mm, I'm not so sure of the left foot. Let's see. Here we go. Right foot in. Looks like the left foot is in from that angle. Kind of blocked by Ben Wickery, who was beat on a double move, by the way. Ball was a little late. But from that angle, and the official's right on top of it. The previous play is now under review. Time out. Question is, was the left foot in bounds? Or was any part of it out of bounds? They're going to review this, of course, and we'll be back in just a moment. Back here, scoring review. Was it a catch by Robinson or no catch? John Hussey is out there. Mike Pereira is in our studio in Los Angeles. I think it was a catch. Here he is. The ruling on the field stands. Touchdown. It's a touchdown. Mike, Mike, what did you see? I think they had to look at two things here. They had to look at was the left foot down, inbounds, and you really couldn't tell. I think it was, but there was not a down the line shot. And then after you look at that, then did he hold on to the ball when he hit the ground? And I don't think the ball even moved. Maybe a little bit, but he certainly didn't lose possession. So really a good call on the field and a good job and replay of staying with what was called. Thank you, Mike. And of course, no evidence to rule otherwise as Matt Bryant kicks the extra point. And it is now 31 to 10 in favor of the Falcons. So just to go back real quick on the official was in perfect position so you got to give him the benefit of the doubt he was looking right at it now what do I do if I'm Carolina all right so I don't have any rhythm going offensively so I'm going a little bit of a hurry up type of offense by going up tempo and hurry up what you can do then is get a pre snap read of what the defense is doing 
and hopefully if you're Carolina, get number one and his receivers into some type of rhythm and go quick passing game to help your offensive line with protection. Aldrick Robinson, who came over from the Redskins as a free agent, that's his reaction. The 35-yard touchdown catch. So 92 yards on this drive, and so three scoring drives by the Falcons of 90 or more yards, which is uh, really testament to the fact that they're number one in offense. And they might have done it against teams that did not have strong defenses, but they're doing it against the legitimate defense today by far. And they knew they had a challenge. They called it the best front seven that they've faced so far. And you look at it, to me, Carolina's missing Josh Norman. There's no way around it, at least after today. You wouldn't get an argument from any quarters, for sure. Just look at the results. Ted Ginn will down it for a touchback. Well, tomorrow there's a new villain coming to Gotham, and you'd better not let him get into your head. The Mad Hatter has arrived, and he knows what you fear most. It's an all-new Gotham tomorrow right here on Fox. You know, Chris, Matt Ryan was tied for the best rating, quarterback rating. And, uh, you know, he's thrown to a lot of different receivers. I don't know if he hurt himself today so far. 25 of 32, 415 yards, three touchdowns, and his one pick. His pocket presence <laughs> and his vision of the field and distribution of the football makes him so difficult in his whole Atlanta Falcons offense to defend. First down at the 25. Three touchdown deficit now for Carolina. They'll run the ball with Fozzie Whitaker picking up about three. As anticipated, they're going no huddle. See if they can get Newt into some type of rhythm. How do you do that with the quick passing game going? Second and seven. Here's Whitaker again. So now it'll be third and nine. Deion Jones there to make the stop. That guy getting better and better each week, Deion Jones. Physically, he was able to hang in there. The biggest challenge that he had was communication. Dan Quinn told us his communication and leading that defense has improved week after week. Remember, this defense came up 30th overall, giving up the most points. And they deserve kudos as well for how well they have played against Carolina. So it's been a complete effort to this point by the Falcons. And Cam Newton getting away from trouble and on the run, trying to get it to Benjamin, incomplete, thrown out of bounds. And it's fourth down. And once again, Dwight Freeney, who has a couple of sacks and a knockdown of a pass, a factor here. He cannot get comfortable in the pocket. Every time there's something happening, here's Freeney, as you mentioned it, coming off, working on Remmers. And again, just beating him with speed. And Cam has no chance of setting his feet. When you don't set your feet, there's no way you can deliver an accurate football. Eric Weems coming over from the 21. And Weems is put down at the 30 by Robert McLean. It's been all Falcons, defense, offense. Robinson, the latest to get into the act from Matt Ryan, who has four TD passes. Those are the Falcon offensive leaders. And normally we show you three, we could show you about 10. The way they play first and 10 at the 29 leading 31 to 10 and the pitch to Devontae Freeman get ahead of steam first down for Freeman out to the 41 yard line and a good block by Jacob Tammy the tight end well Fox Sports supports is proud to team with the National Alliance on Mental Illness in support of Mel Mental Illness Awareness Week join us in replacing stigma with hope by learning more about how to be stigma free and visit foxsportssupports.com. Smart by Atlanta now to, to huddle up, take your time, run clock. Details. Again, Freeman. And again, Freeman. He nearly got a first down, got nine yards out of it. 
Christina Pink with an injury update. Well, bad news for the Panthers. Thomas Davis is doubtful to return. He's sitting on the bench right now, has his right hamstring wrapped. I'm told the hamstring injury is uh, is going to keep him, again, doubtful for the remainder of the game, not out there. And a few of his teammates have come over to pat him on the back. He's clearly frustrated about not being in the game. What a courageous guy. Played Super Bowl 50 with a metal plate, surgically repaired, broken right forearm. Told you about the torn ACL three times in three years. What a warrior. Second down and one. Here's Freeman. And he's got the first down. By the way, Davis replaced by A.J. Klein, who left the team Wednesday following the death of his father, Lynn, and then came back to the club. So our condolences to him and his family. A.J.'s a good, solid backup to play inside and outside. Thomas Davis is the pro. Tremendous player and hasn't slowed down in his 12th year. Hey, shout out to the Ryan Schrader, Chris Chester, Alex Mack, Andy Levitri, Jake Matthews. Dominated this game. And they're able to do it with pass pro and run blocking. And the team knows you're running the football, yet you're still able to run it. It's a credit to them. Thank you for mentioning their names. A lot of time their names are never mentioned in a game unless they make a mistake. As Devontae Freeman stopped for no gain. And another report from Christina. Well, as you guys praise this Falcons offensive line, interesting note is they're actually the lightest offensive line in the NFL. Average starting weight, 305.5 pounds. And that's after adding some size this offseason with guys like Alex Mack. They've obviously played well today and done a great job of keeping Matt Ryan upright for most of this season and done a great job in the run game. Certainly a group that deserves that praise. Back to you, Dick. Yeah, Christina, what they do really well is they get to the second level off double teams. Even the first touchdown by Freeman, Alex Mack, perfection. Second down and 10. And the pass is caught by Julio Jones. That's his 11th reception of the game and over 200 yards for the second time in his career with about a half a minute remaining in the third quarter. And one of the great things about the Falcons, I know they Ryan threw a pick six after it was deflected by Davis and intercepted by Kurt Coleman, but They've kept him pretty free. Has not been sacked much this year, twice in this game, and only a couple of turnovers for a team to add to how successful they are. And that is going to be the end of the third quarter here at Atlanta. Fans love it here at the Georgia Dome with the score the Falcons 31 and the Panthers 10. This is the end. Start of the fourth quarter, Dick Stockton, Chris Spielman, Christina Pink. And 14 points put up by the Falcons in the third quarter. They started off strong offensively and have not taken their foot off the pedal. Outstanding on both sides of the ball. Third down and one on the Panther 37. And this will be a first down sticking through as Kevin Coleman getting underneath. Really a solid play call again, and I want to uh, mention why. Because you spread them out. So the defense has to counter to spread them out. You have a gap for a gap. Your offensive line has been dominating on run blocking all day. That opens up space for the speedy Tevin Coleman because he only needs a yard. But that's dictating offensively what you want a defense to do by spreading them out to run the football. They've rushed for 87 yards to 47 for Carolina. First down at the 34 of the Panthers. Play action. Going up on top to Chanu. And covered downfield by Darrell Worley. Falcons have that shot anytime they want. Because of the success running the football, Carolina is forced to commit either run pressures or having eight guys within five yards of the football. They're playing one on one out on the corners. So they're vulnerable to that. Any point throughout this drive. Coming into this game the question is can the Falcons playing their toughest opponent pass the test. And so far they're passing it with flying colors second down and ten. Here's Coleman and he'll be knocked back for a two yard loss. Thanks to LeVar Edwards, who has played well defensively in the 
shorthanded game for the Panthers, trailing all the way, loss of one. But here's what offenses think. Trey Boston, we talked about having eight guys up within, was late coming up to that line of scrimmage. Normally, if Matt Ryan sees that, what he'll do is audible and call that running play opposite of where Trey Boston was coming. Well played, patient by Trey Boston of showing his final defensive position late to the quarterback. Those are the little nuances that make a play successful. Third down and 11. Ryan. And incomplete. Julio Jones actually did not catch a pass that time. Worley on the coverage. And it'll be fourth down. Jones with 11 catches, 225 yards. And Matt Bryant will come in to try to add to the Falcon lead. 53 away. Hit one from 56 in warm-ups. This is the longest attempt he's had all year coming into this game, and he hasn't missed yet this season. He hadn't even attempted a 40-yard field goal. So a 53-yard attempt here by Bryant. He was just waiting for his moment. 53-yard field goal by Matt Bryant, who's been here forever. And Cam Newton is getting ready. The field goal giving the Falcons a 34 to 10 lead. Georgia Dome, where Dan Quinn's Falcons leading the division and leading this game by 24 points, trying to go three and one on the year and open up a two game lead over the Carolina Panthers, a team that has won the division the last three years and got to the Super Bowl last season. And running this one out is Ted Ginn. Ginn up the middle, had some running room. And Ginn with a great return brings it out past the 35-yard line. Well, October 8th is Super Saturday on FS1. Here's the lineup at 11 a.m. Eastern. It's a huge college football rivalry as Texas faces Oklahoma. Then at 3.30, Game 2 of the National League Division Series. And at 7, it's UFC 204 Freeland. Catch all the action on Super Saturday on FS1. I love the Texas Red River, Red River rivalry. Yeah. I've been fortunate to work that game the past few years. It's a great college football game and a great atmosphere at the Cotton Bowl, the real Cotton Bowl. Yes. Remember that? Cowboys used to play there. Started there. First and 10 from the 37 for Cam Newton. And here is Corey Brown, who is open and gets a first down as he goes out of bounds at the 47 of Atlanta. So fans at home might be saying, as Carolina will have some success, where was this all? game well it's going to have success because the Falcons are playing smart dropping deep keeping everything in front of them so the Panthers can move the football then they would get down to the red zone that's when the Falcons will tighten up their D but that's what you want to do in this type of situation with a 24 point lead first down and this pass is incomplete intended for Benjamin and covered by Desmond Trufant we thought this was going to be a pretty good matchup between those two today but Benjamin with only one catch for 21 yards and that early in the game you know one thing if you're looking at the film if I'm Cam Newton and I know I can throw the football and I have a strong arm I want to make sure my footwork is sound and the other thing is he has a little pocket to climb or step up into and he's hesitant to step up into that pocket sometimes which forces a, 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 an off throw Mass changes by the Falcons defense and a flag is down and the pass is caught and that will be the first reception today for Greg Olson. Olson catching his first pass and a gain of 24 yards inside the 25 but a fl flag was thrown. I don't know if they all got off the field in time where the Falcons had too many men and didn't appear that they did. Too many men on the field. Defense. That penalty is declined. Result of the play. First down. You don't see that often like that at that point. It's good awareness by Cam Newton and Khalil, the center, to get that ball snapped, understanding that they were trying to switch personnel when you're already lined up. Still early here in this fourth quarter. Plenty of time remaining. 34 to 10. Big lead by the Falcons. 
First down on the Falcon 23. And the pass thrown underneath to Fozzie Whitaker. He has another first down and gets to about the six. Gain of 18. Better job to, by Remmers. Playing left tackle. Doing a good job of holding up, giving Cam time to survey the field. And when he has time and his feet are right, he is deadly accurate. First and goal from the six. Newton's pass, and Kelvin Benjamin makes the touchdown grab up the middle. And that is the first offensive touchdown of the day for the Panthers. Six-yard throw to Benjamin. Only his second catch. And they'll go for two. With the, trusting the size of your receiver, watch. He's going to jump right over Ricardo Allen, the safety, and Cam Newton delivers the ball where only the big, tall Benjamin can catch it. Now, they like to Cam have the run pass option down here at two point plays. Or you throw the jump ball to Benjamin. Two point conversion coming up. And it's going to be a keeper and a. The two-point conversion. Did he get over? Yes, he did. And Cam Newton gets hit. Apparently he's all right as he gets up. That was kind of close, Chris, as far as getting, getting in there. Well, I think Cam made the mistake of thinking that he was in on the, time. The flag down. He was hit squarely by Deion Jones. Two-point conversion is successful. The ruling on the field is a touchdown. After the play, taunting number 70. That penalty is in the category. If number 70 gets the same type of foul, he will be ejected from the game. Trey Turner, who is the right guard for the Panthers, Second that taunting call. Will be enforced on the kickoff. Second taunting call called against Carolina. Here's, Cam didn't get in the first time. Right here, see he slowed down right here. Deion Jones never quit on the feet on the play. But the great strength of Cam Newton. Oh, he was over. And it's 34 to 18 now, Falcons lead. That's Trey Turner, number 70, who was called for taunting, and uh, next time he'll be ejected from the game. Let's pick it up. Well, I think Trey's upset because in Kelvin, you see him punched right there to his head, saying that was helmet to helmet on Cam Newton. But Cam Newton is not a defenseless player in that situation. And according to Mike Barrera back at headquarters, that it wasn't the crown of the helmet. Deion Jones kept his head up and then lowered to hit them with the crown. Justin Hardy is back to return for the first time today for Atlanta. Finds open spaces, and Hardy gets tripped up by the kicker, Graham Gano. So watch right here. Deion Jones does not hit with the crown of his helmet. He hits with the side of his helmet. And plus, Cam Newton, how as I understand the rule, is not a defenseless player. He is the ball carrier. And a fundamental thing I'd like to point out to all you young coaches, if Deion Jones wraps him up, he might not get in the end zone. Cam Newton is going into the locker room now. That was a 32-yard return, and the Falcons will start at midfield. 16-point lead. That's a two-score game right now for Atlanta. And here is Devontae Freeman. And Freeman is knocked back. Good defensive play by Shaq Thompson for a loss. For a game break, let's check in now with Kurt. This is Christina. All right. And, of course, the Rams are tied for the lead out in the NFC West. Huh? Well, I watched, uh, we watched the Rams last week, and they seem to find their offense in touchdowns in boxes that Jeff Fisher unpacked finally. <laughs> Seattle and Arizona with the division favorites coming into this year. Freeman goes wide to the top of your picture on second down and 14 and the pass and sh to just short of midfield will still need 10 more yards as Sanu makes the grab for a pickup of four. You're up by 16 points so that's 
two possessions right now with plenty of time to go. You're Ryan, do you, you don't alter your offense, do you, at this point? You slow it down, what they're doing, and you snap the ball with about five seconds or less on the play clock. And I look for Julio Jones on third and ten. Ryan flush from the pocket and going out of bounds so they'll have to kick Luke Keekley chased him out of bounds but good coverage downfield on the receivers that's because they were holding 26 was holding Sanu number 12 Worley was holding Sanu and they got away with it and when I played cover I, I held all the time and from our anytime there's Jersey being grabbed right there that's a holding that's an automatic first down that's a missed call by the officials the Falcons for playing by the rules should have the ball interesting observation and we saw it there in the replay so Bosher will be punting and Ted Ginn Jr. is back fair catch and Ginn fields it at the six 922 still a lot of time remaining and we saw Newton go into the locker room so Derek Anderson who was in for one play last week warming up and heading in Derek Anderson is the new quarterback for the Panthers Cam Newton went into the locker room was in for one play last week he's a veteran and his first pass is complete to Ted Ginn and a first down let's go down to Christina Pink Dick Derek Anderson is in the game because Cam Newton is currently being evaluated for a concussion he remains in the Panthers locker room accompanied by the medical staff I'll give you more information once I have it all right thank you very much Christina that pass was to Benjamin and now here is Anderson and the flag is down as he gets picks up one yard Anderson 12th year out of Oregon State and a very reliable backup quarterback Nice, solid. Illegal shift offense. Two men moving in the, before the snap at the same time. Five yard penalty. First down. Five yard penalty called against the Panthers. All right, here we're going to see the shot that Cam Newton takes. First of all, by slowing down, he makes himself a target. And it is not helmet to helmet because he is not a defenseless player. Plus, you have to hit with the crown of your helmet and lower your head which Deion Jones did a great job of hitting with his eyes not getting the penalty so after the illegal shift it's a first down 15 on the 13 and Anderson's pass and that's Ginn as he makes the grab at the 19 yard line Leroy Reynolds making the stop pickup of six so what an uphill climb it is now Chris Spielman for the Carolina Panthers down by 16, 820 to go, and forced to go with the backup quarterback. Atlanta's going to play safe. The last thing you want to do as a defense is not give up anything over your head. Keep it in front. Second down and nine. And that pass caught by Greg Olson, shy of the first down. Now we have under eight minutes to go in the fourth. By keeping the ball in front, it forces the offense to use clock. Third down and one. Comes the pressure and the handoff to Fozzie Whitaker and a first down. Let's go back to week one. Cam Newton took a pounding and a loss to Denver. Sacked three times, took a number of hits, many of which were borderline in terms of the rules. And the Panthers lost the game 21 20. Yeah, that, there was a couple where when that eyes go to the ground, you're vulnerable to hitting with the crown of your helmet. And I think there were some fines levied after the fact with the review. First down at the 29. Anderson getting the protection, and he flips it out to Fozzie Whitaker, and Whitaker is hit quickly. Reynolds with his second good defensive play of the sequence. Limits Whitaker to three. So Aries an improvement for the Falcons coming into this game where they struggled defensively was missed tackles. And Reynolds made a great open field tackle on the slippery 
Fozzie Whitaker. That's a big improvement, and that's why the Falcons have played this type of game today. Cut down on big plays and missed tackles. Terrific all-round game, as you're pointing out. Second down and seven. Anderson's pass, and it is caught by Funches. Kevin Funches gets away, wasn't stopped, and now he's tackled as he gets to the 21 of the Falcons. Reynolds involved in the play, makes the tackle in the hurry up by Anderson. 48-yard play. One reason why you had time to throw down the field because Whitaker's going to help Freeney with Remmers. And there you go. And the pass. And a flag goes down. Funches, defended by Robert Alford, might have been held down there. And a penalty marker down. Keep in mind that Carolina is two touchdowns and two two-point conversions away from tying this game. With 5.49 on the clock. Just gave praise That's about being able. Defense. That foul occurred in the end zone. The ball was placed at the one yard line. Automatic. First down. Of the Falcons being able to tackle Funches. Number 78 reports is eligible. Again, being the target is eligible. for 23. So it'll be first and goal at the one. And the bring in Donald Hawkins, number 78, is that extra offensive lineman. First and goal. And. A whistle. Remmers in a hurry. Offense number 74. Five yard penalty. First down. Exactly right. Last thing Carolina needs are dead ball fouls at this point. When you're trying to make an uphill comeback climb against a strong team. Ron Rivera's club. Trying to come back. Anderson, meanwhile, is five for five for 77 yards. Anderson, good time, thrown out of the end zone, trying to get it to Greg Olson. And another flag down. Holding, offense number 74, 10 yard penalty, first down. So a false start and now holding against Mike Remmers who is the regular right tackle, moved to the left side with Michael Orr out, placed on concussion protocol. So the shuffling by Rivera of the offensive line taking its toll here. And self-destruction. Self-destruction where they had a touchdown call back in Minnesota last week, which the game changed on. And now 20 yards of penalties or 15 yards of penalties of self-destruction. Ball on the 16. First and goal at the 16. This is caught by Olsen, who gets to the 7. Vic Beasley, who we highlighted before the game, had great pressure, but Derek Anderson with a strong enough arm to throw through that pressure to the big, tall target in Olsen. Keep your eyes on Benjamin, number 13. Tall target. We love him in the red zone. Remember the Panthers did have a first and goal with the one. Now it's second and goal at the seven. And they're going to call another foul, another false start penalty against the Panthers. They get to the one yard line and self destructing with three Offense. penalties. Number 74, five yard penalty, second down. And it's Mike Remmers again for the third penalty since they got to first and goal at the one. Well, he knows that he's got to get out of his stance because the ears are pinned back from the Falcon players. And he's got to make sure he gets his depth as an offensive tackle, especially if you have to wait Freeney, who's great with the speed rush and a spin off of them. Cam Newton in the locker room being examined for a possible concussion. Derek Anderson started from the six with a second and goal again. And Tolbert, the fullback, can't get away. And it was Sean Weatherspoon. Beautiful job of not giving up one for one. Runs through Norwell on the outside. Tolbert missed the cut back inside. And Weatherspoon, playing man-to-man, -man, is going to close in a hurry 
on these two guys. Watch him close in a hurry. See that, Dick? He's man-to-man, -man, closes in a hurry, beats Norwell to the spot and able to make an open field tackle. No chance. So it's third and goal from the 16. And Anderson to the end zone. Olsen! Did he hold on? Yes, touchdown! One-handed grab, brought it into his body, and the Panthers, who looked like they would be stymied with three penalties when they reached the one, finally reached pay dirt on a 14-yard touchdown pass from Derek Anderson to Greg Olson, and now they will go for two again. It's a beautiful double move right here by Olson, which he shouldn't fall for because of the down situation. And just the size advantage over Neal, Derek Anderson has trust that my guy, Olsen, will go win the 50-50 ball with a beautiful one-handed catch and securing it after the hit. So they go for two with 3.58 on the clock. And they can make it a one-possession game if they're successful. Here comes the two-point attempt. And the pass is caught for the two-point conversion by Olsen. And all of a sudden, the Atlanta Falcon lead has been cut to eight with just under four minutes remaining in the fourth quarter. Drama near the finish here in the Georgia Dome. Because the Falcons came with a blitz pressure, Neal right here could not give up the inside. Greg Olson, the crafty vet, sets him outside, and it's an easy pitch and catch from Anderson to Olson because Neal gave up the inside on man to man with blitz coverage. There's no help inside part of the field. It's too easy. And right here, the Panthers don't need the onside kick. They still have their timeouts. Plenty of time on the clock plus a two minute warning. Nine plays, 94 yards. A 24 point lead by Atlanta's been cut to eight. And the Falcons will start from the 25. It was 34 to 10. And then two touchdowns and two two-point conversions. Coming up next on Fox, the Cowboys collide with the 49ers. The Rams take on the Cardinals. Or the Saints face the Chargers. America's Game of the Week coming up next here on Fox. See if the Cardinals can bounce back against the Rams, who found their confidence last week against Tampa Bay. Eric Anderson bounced back. What a drive. Huge for Derek Anderson. Sixth year with Carolina, 12th year overall in the NFL, but now Matt Ryan has him on the 25. 358 on the clock. And he's going to throw on first down to Julio Jones. Jones still on his feet. Julio Jones. And he's going to score. Touchdown! <laughs> 75 yards and what a play call, partner. It's a great play call, set up the play action, playing to win, playing as opposed to playing not to lose, taking a shot because you trust Ryan and Jones. And, and where's Josh Norman? If you're going to play Julio Jones, you got to have a shutdown corner. They don't have a shutdown corner. And so when you're putting Ben Wickery, who's a fine player, don't get me wrong, one on one with Jones, the results 12 touchdowns, 12 receptions, 300 yards. Matt Bryant. Talk about a rally killer. One pass, Julio Jones. 300 yards on the day with 12 catches. Same thing, Dick. He's on inside alignment. Don't give up the inside. If you're blitzing, you don't have help in the middle of the field. That's too easy. First of all, you want him to go outside because it's a more difficult throw. If he goes inside, it's a laser. And once he gets the ball in his hands, he's a tremendous wreck guy. Run after catch, but poor position by Ben Wickery, plus a missed tackle off the stiff arm. Then he's off celebrating with the fans in Atlanta. They put two rookies on him to start the game. First it was Bradbury and then Worley. And then they went to Ben Wickery. Same result. And Matt Ryan. That's why corners are drafted number one. That's why corners get big money. You pay them. I was talking to Thomas uh, Dimitrov, and they got to make a decision on uh, Trufant coming up next year. 
you got a strong man on man and there's Matt Ryan's numbers who will exploit any man on man coverage 503 yards a franchise record 300 yards receiving for Julio Jones a franchise record four touchdowns today. And a 41 to 26 lead with 345 to go. Gutty call not just content in running the clock out but the running play going to your big guy and trying to just put it into it now. Well you make that call because you trust your offensive line you trust your veteran quarterback and your all world wide receiver. So the Panthers will take it out at the 25. That's a smart man. Bypass the head coach. Let me go to the big fella. <laughs> yeah, my extension should be in the mail. <laughs> Arthur Blank, who went with Dan Quinn last year as his latest head coach. He's had a few here. And trying to make things work. And this is the last year playing in the Georgia Gome. They're going into a new palace next year, retractable roof. They want to have a little momentum going into that and if they hold on they'll go three and one in the division and maintain the lead in the NFC South. It used to be a merry-go-round musical chairs every year a different team winning but Carolina's won the last three and that could be in jeopardy this time around. Derek Anderson nearly intercepted by Brian Poole. Well they too. We didn't know like everybody saying Carolina and I was it's going to bounce back this week because Atlanta's defense was giving up 30 points a game. So they answered a question for me. I mean obviously they're giving up some yards because they've been in a little bit of prevent but their defense has been solid. What lack of pass rush. Their pass rush has been outstanding today. Not necessarily about sacks but the number of hits that they've had on Cam Newton slash Derek Anderson. Anderson eight for nine. That was his first incompletion since coming in. The flag is down. Try to flip it out to Whitaker, deflected by Vic Beasley Jr. Offside, defense number 44. Five yard penalty, second down. You make a good point, Chris, because the Falcons, in rolling up that number one offense, face the 32nd, 31st, and 19th ranked defenses. But today, they were going against. A defense that was number three overall in the Panthers. And the balance, it looked like the same, the same offense. They have not missed a beat, able to run, able to throw, and do what they want, then isolate Julio Jones one on one. Just incredible job of play calling by Kyle Shanahan. Second down and five, 336 on the clock. And this pass is caught by Whitaker. Stops the clock going out of bounds at 3:31. Flipper Anderson has the NFL record with 336 yards when he was a member of the Rams back in 1989, and Jones is 36 yards away from that. Sean Weatherspoon, the Falcon linebacker, is shaken up. We'll take a break and return in just a moment. Julio Jones and Matt Ryan and that's only hard to say with setting franchise records and passing and receiving only part of the great story for the Falcons today. Well the other part is the unsung part and the part that was to be the weakness just by numbers alone was that defense and I thought the defense was outstanding today. First down at the 37. Derek Anderson. Fozzie Whitaker trying to get a few more yards before going out of bounds and should have a first down but points are what they need. So Jones with a franchise record 300 receiving yards Matt Ryan with a franchise record right now 503 yards and those numbers could still go up. Cam Newton leaving the game in the fourth quarter with an injury checking to see if there's a concussion after that play on the two point conversion collision at the goal line. It was a first down for Carolina and they may have another one now as Greg Olson makes the catch. It is a first down for the Panthers. 
Newton was five for, uh, let's see, his uh, 14 for 25 was his official passing numbers for 165 yards and a touchdown and rushed for 30. Joe Webb is in the game, number 14, as a receiver. And a flag. Delay a game, defense, number 31. Creating action to try to create the offensive player to full start. Five-yard penalty, first down. So this is a delay a game on the defense. Want to welcome our new viewers in a wild game in which the Atlanta Falcons led by 24 points had a cut to eight and then combination of Ryan and Julio Jones record breakers today in Atlanta franchise history Dick Stockton along with Chris Spielman Christina Pink with us as well it is first down and five for Derek Anderson and the pass is caught by Webb We want to welcome our additional viewers here. And uh, Chris, how would you size up this game? Atlanta led by as many as 24 in the fourth quarter. Carolina made a run with a couple of touchdowns and two point conversions. And then Atlanta with a big score. Yeah, 572 yards of total offense and no answer for Julio Jones. That's the sum. Second down and two. Anderson's pass is incomplete. Surprised at anything in this game. Obviously, number one would be Atlanta's defensive play. Well, Exactly, but the pass rush coming in Atlanta's defense on the year had three sacks. Now they didn't get a lot of sacks, but they hit Cam Newton, forced his footwork to be off, and they've been outstanding in that area. And plus, Carolina's offense, no balance whatsoever. Now a lot's been dictated by the game, but even early on, it had zero for a running game. Cam Newton went to the locker room for concussion protocol in the fourth quarter. Derek Anderson replaced him. Here is Greg Olson. And he stops the clock at 242. Was an eight point game at one point, and then instead of running the clock out, Matt Ryan went to Julio Jones. A pretty good play call there for Atlanta, and they're really feeling feeling great these days. And you look at, at the Panthers and the, and the execution of their offense. I, I love to say champions die hard. These guys are champions, and they're not going to quit. Now, you have to always be alert in this part of the field because of the size Kelvin Benjamin and Greg Olson who's been a favorite target of Derek Anderson have been his go-to guys Anderson has done well since he's come in and he completes the pass to Ed Dixon and Dixon is upended shy of the first down by Brian Poole so Anderson is in the game because of this play a two-point conversion second effort gave Cam Newton the two points but the collision with Deion Jones sent him to the locker room. A lot of people would be asking, isn't that helmet to helmet? He's not a defensive player. Plus, Deion Jones did a great job of hitting with his eyes and not lowering his head and hitting with the crown of the helmet. If he would have hit with the crown, that would have been a penalty. Second down and two on the 16 of the Falcons. Anderson going for the touchdown. Incomplete to Greg Olson. What a day for Julio Jones. Again, no answer whether it was miscommunication. Matt Ryan finding him deep. And they tried a number of different guys on him, but nobody could match Julio as he took everybody to the schoolyard today. So to speak. And the Falcons with three 90-yard scoring drives today as well. Fifth player all time with 300 or more yards. As a receiver, third down and two. They've got two downs to try to get this. They won't hear as Brown is stopped short after making the catch. You do not want to concede right here. So what you do in order to bring pressure, you keep a safety deep, but you can still bring pressure to make sure you have help with Olsen. You have to play the percentages on defense. Olsen's been the killer, the Falcon killer in the red zone. As we come to the two-minute warning, that's what you do defensively. This is the two-minute warning. Two minutes remaining. Matt Ryan 
leading the number one offense in the NFL, disappointing none of the fans here at the Georgia Dome. Coming up, it's the State Farm Game Break Show. Kurt Terry, Howie, Michael, and Jimmy, along with scores and highlights of all of today's action to get you ready for America's Game of the Week. Two minutes remaining in the fourth quarter. Fourth down and two for the Panthers. Derek Anderson on the run. Completes it to Brown. He scores. Corey Brown catches a fourth down pass for a touchdown. And the Panthers will be going for two once again. Or let's see, they send on Gano. Cut it to an eight point right. game and go for two. Yep. Safe right now because then you have a chance to decide on an onside kick. They still have three timeouts left. They need, would need a touchdown and a two point conversion. They go for two and don't get it here, they'd have trouble. No pressure applied by the Falcons defense, allowing Derek Anderson to roam free and have the choice. Corey Brown. Here is Gano, and the extra point is good. So 41 to 33, so it's a one score game, a touchdown and a two point conversion that Ron Rivera's Panthers need with 153 remaining and three timeouts left. That was a 16-yard touchdown pass, by the way, from Anderson to Brown. Uh, well, if you're going to play man, which the Falcons did, then you want to bring pressure and force a quick throw. That time, Derek Anderson was able to have all kind of time, survey the field, break through the pocket, and you can't ask your guys to cover that long because you're not going to stick on any receiver. So with that, you have to bring pressure. How about Anderson, 16 of 19, 163, and two touchdowns. Atlanta leading Carolina, 41 to 33, their biggest test of the year. Came in two and one with the number one offense, but moving up in class and playing the Panthers. They're coming off a loss to Minnesota, trying to right the ship, and it hasn't been that way for them today, as Atlanta leads 41-33. Nick Stockton, Chris Spielman, Christina Pink. And uh, are you surprised at the way the Panthers haven't turned it around from last week? Uh, uh, not at all. Well, first of all, they've been able to take care of the prevent defense that Falcons were doing to try to keep everything from going over their head. Derek Anderson has found his groove and rhythm. Now, they've only been rushing four, and Derek Anderson's been able to exploit that because the protection has been better where Cam had people in his face. On the other side, Julio Jones 300 yards receiving and Matt Ryan 500 yards passing both franchise records and now Ryan will go to work again four touchdowns 503 yards in the air eight point lead and 153 remaining the last time they were in this position Chris he went to Julio Jones and decided to eschew the running game. You don't think he'll do that again, do you? Well, if he does it, I think he'll do it on second down. They might because of the connection that they have. The safe play is obviously run it three times and make the Panthers use their timeouts. Panthers have all three left. From the 25. Hand off to Dante Freeman for a couple of yards. And the Panthers will use their first time out and we'll check in with Carissa Thompson for a game break. Carissa. Thanks, Dick. Just a reminder, America's game of the week. The Cowboys and the Niners, Dak Prescott will be without the services of Des, Des Bryant, who's out with a knee injury. The Niners looking to snap their two-game losing streak. That game is next. Dick, Chris, and Christina. All right, Carissa, thank you very much. Well, Jones is out there, and they know that Carolina has to use their timeouts. So, Dak Prescott, what a start he's had this year. Helped by Zeke Elliott, two rookies, finding their rhythm with that Cowboy offense. Another good offensive line. Second down and eight. And Ryan will be sacked inside the 20 by K1 Short. That's the third 
sack of the game by Carolina. And a timeout called by the Panthers. They have one left. So tell me about the game as you saw it today, Chris. Well, it's still going on, which is a great game because there's no, there's not a lot of die in champions, and, and the Panthers are champions. And that play particularly was a smart play by Matt Ryan by eating it and taking the sack, forcing the timeout. And I guarantee you, if we told you that if they were going to pass, they're going to pass on second down, it was not there. Matt made a good decision to close it down and just take the sack. Now you run it and force them to use their last timeout. I want to remind you, the State Farm Game Break Show coming up next. 1.42 on the clock. And the Panthers have one timeout remaining. And we're going to give it to Dante Freeman. And Freeman will have a first down. The third and long and a six yard gain and now the third and final timeout going on and so the punter will come on Matt Bosher for Atlanta. You want to eliminate the return so if your punter is good at directional kicking and your punt cover team. Please reset the game clock for 137 please 137 thank you. We only have to cover one side of the field because that's a very dangerous man back there in Ted Ginn Jr. So the last thing you want to do is line it. You either want a directional kick or make sure that the hang time is outstanding to force a fair catch so he does not have the ability to set up field position with a return. Panthers had scored three touchdowns and converted three two-point conversions and need another one to tie this game. Here's the return by Ted Ginn from the 16. And forced to go out of bounds at about the 25. Leroy Reynolds pushed him there. So no timeouts left. Derek Anderson, who is 16 for 19, 163 yards, thrown a couple of touchdown passes in relief of Cam Newton, who went in for concussion protocol here in the fourth. Well, it's the white for any time. This is why the vet was brought in for these situations, these situations alone. He's not asked to play the run. He's not asked to play on first and second down. What he's asked to do is get off the quarterback. And he's had some pressures today. So Remmers, the left tackle, normally the Panthers' right tackle, is going to be challenged. That's the matchup to watch away from the ball. Panthers, no timeouts remaining. They need a touchdown and a two-point conversion to tie. Anderson. Intercepted. Robert Alford. Carolina has come back so many times, but Atlanta has had the answer. And this answer is the final one. As the Falcons, with an interception and a touchdown, pick six by Robert Alford to nail this one down. Talk about great play on both sides of the ball, Chris. They made a play when they had to be made. Just by zone defense. And right here, he's going to Olsen. That's been his contact guy. 23 all for stick position playing cover two. It looked like Olsen almost quit on it a little bit, but good job of blocking transition and tremendous effort by the whole Falcons team. Matt Bryan adds the extra point, and it's 48 to 33. This is a team that has scored 24, 35, 45, and now 48 points in four games. 30-yard return by Alford, his second career touchdown. And the question for the Falcons today, going up against their toughest foe of this season, could they pass the test? after beating New Orleans on Monday night. And there's no question about it. They did it with flying colors. Yep. And with balance. I know the, the total yards as far as rushing goes for the Falcons is only 92 yards, but they've been really good, solid 92 yards. Also, the continuous job of that man, Matt Ryan, distributing the ball to nine different guys. Then your star has 12 catches 
for 300 yards. And what that offense forces a defense to do is defend the whole field, and you have to be alert all the time. Like for the Panthers, we knew, right? Derek Anderson had a nice little rhythm going with Greg Olson. So they were going to take Greg Olson out of that. They put so much pressure on defenses. Well, they got a couple of tough games coming up at Denver and Seattle, does Dan Quinn's Falcons, but they'll go in three and one. Then they have San Diego, Green Bay, so three of their next four are tough tests before they go to Tampa Bay. Team they lost to in the opening game in the divisional battle. But this was a, a huge win against the defending conference champions, smarting after the loss to the Vikings, coming in one and two, and you kind of thought they were going to rebound, and that was going to be a big test for the Falcons. Touchback, taken out on the 25. Well, they have issues, and they have issues with their offense. There's no consistent running game. There's no consistency as far as pass protection. And that was the problem coming in, and that continues to be the problem. Carolina with games against Tampa Bay at home and at New Orleans before the bye week. So three of their next four plus a bye week are games in which they can get back into stride. And what you sell, if you're Ron Rivera, you got two division games coming up, and we need to get right if we want to make a run. Because right now they're digressing instead of progressing. 114, no timeouts left. And the pass caught by Ed Dixon. State Farm game break show coming up next here on Fox. Under a minute remaining. Panthers made a run in this game, got it down to eight on two occasions. But the Falcons had an answer, and on the last time it was on a pick six. Rams-Cardinals game interests me. The Cardinals, they have to find their way. They're a really good football team, but sometimes I think they think they're good, and they just roll out the helmets. Bruce Arians will have them ready to play today. That's their M.O., and that guy was ready to play today. Oh, 12 catches, 300 yards, and a touchdown grab. Carolina a little bit like Arizona in the fact that uh, so much was expected and find themselves on the losing ledger at this point. Third down and one, and another interception on a deflection. Offered again, his second one. First was a pick six. Now with 38 seconds remaining, they'll just run out the clock. And for the Panthers, they will have lost their second regular season game in a row for the first time since 2014. So they had 23 regular season games coming into today, and they hadn't lost back-to-back -back games. That's what you have to pull together. It's easy to point fingers. It, you can say something about the secondary. You can say something about the offensive line. You can say something about the quarterback play. It's all tied together. It's not a one-guy problem. It's a Panther problem, and they need to figure it out. And that will run it out as the Falcons go to three and one and the Panthers drop to one and three for Chris Fieldman and Christina Pink Dick Stockton saying so long from Atlanta right now let's go to the State Farm game break show with Kurt Menefee and the boys in Los Angeles